All right, so now I want to show you a Velociraptor, which I think is just wonderful. The purpose of Velociraptor, Splunk you've used, Splunk lets you see what's going on in your network. It's like read-only. You're viewing the logs that are recorded from all the devices. But Velociraptor is active. It's an intrusion response system. It's based on the earlier product GER from Google. And it, it lets you run queries where you ask questions of all your devices. Do you have this registry key? Do you have this file? To see if they're infected. And then you can even take remediation actions from it. So it's a real incident response, active inc incident response platform. And so you need a server and then you have clients. And you, one server could, you know, be managing a whole fleet of clients all over the place in remote locations. And this is the point. You don't have to drive down and touch them. You handle them from this central point. So uh, the latest version is 6.0. The instructions say to check the version number, but you don't really have to. We've been doing this yesterday. It hasn't changed. So to prepare your server, you just go to your Linux server, which I've got here, and you execute these commands. Now, I would not type them in. They are long, and they're likely to make mistakes. Never type in any long commands. That is a, a common error. Uh, just always find a way to copy and paste them in. So I'm going to open a terminal inside here, or I mean a browser inside here, like uh, Internet Firefox, to get the, term, the uh, instructions inside my virtual machine. So I can copy and paste. So Sam's class dot info and full stack instant response and down a couple pages. All right, there's Velociraptor server. And let me see if I can make my window a little bigger. All right, that's good. I could even do this. Yeah, that's even better. All right, and so now um, I don't really need to check the version number. Like I say, we're using a good recent version. All right, so I need to execute these commands, make dir Velociraptor, change into Velociraptor, and w get the program. It's extremely simple. I love the pro software like this. It doesn't actually install or anything. It just is a executable. It just sits in a directory. So it's easy to find, easy to remove, and all that jazz. So right click paste. And there it goes. It made a directory. It moved into there. Now it's going to get the server software from GitHub. And there it comes. It's not even very big, 24 megs. So that's awesome. Then you change the mode to make it executable and run it. So I copy that. And I've run this. OK, now I run it. And it will create a configuration file, velociraptorconfig.yaml. And before, I modified this to make it visible off this machine. But I realized we don't need to do that with the setup we're using now. So you can skip the stuff inside the gray box and just go down here. So this will just move the Velociraptor config to the folder where it belongs, which is etc. And this will control create an administrator user. So just copy them and paste them in. All right. And now it needs a password. So I'm going to give it a password I can remember. All right. That has created a user. And now you just run it. So it's Velociraptor. Um, front end minus V for verbose. That will run what's called the front end, which is the server. And it shows you right here, it's ready to handle TLS requests on that address. So you click that address, and I thought it might, it might, I double clicked it, I thought it might open in uh, Firefox, but it doesn't. But I think I can copy and paste it into Firefox. Yeah, there we go. Now, I'm using self-signed certificates, so it's going to warn me that this is not a real certificate. And you have to go down here and uh, accept the risk and continue. And now it's the admin account I just created like 10 seconds ago. So the password I typed in. All right. And by the way, if you forget it, you just run the add command again to change it. A student had that happen last time. So now you're in Velociraptor. And this is the home page. And um, you can 
she information about the server here. This will tell you how much CPU and memory it's using and how many clients are connected. And there are zero clients connected right now, so this is a server, but it can't really do much of anything until it has clients. So the next thing we have to do is connect the Windows client to it. So we have to put an agent on the client, and that is not hard to do. Um, you, I'll need another terminal here. This one is busy, so I open another application terminal. Okay. And in that one, I execute these commands. Now I have to tell the client that the um, I'm using those self-signed certificates. Otherwise, it will be not wanting to connect to this unsafe device. So I have to go in here and uh, after the nonce, I have to put in this line telling it use self-signed SSL. True. So that goes here. And I save it with Control X, Y, Enter. And now I do these commands, move into the VelociRafter directory, and I run the VelociRafter software to create a client configuration. And I'm just, I could copy all these commands at once, but I prefer to do them one or two at a time so I can spot if there are errors. The most common error is the one I made there, where I don't really get every letter of the command in the copy and paste. So if I paste this, that worked, and this needs an L at the end. All right. Good. So that created the client configuration file. And now I have to get the Windows installer, which is this thing that ends in an EXE. All right. And there it comes. It's not very big either, like 21 megs. And now I need this command, which is running a little bit too long. Okay, good. There it is. This is the one that's going to create a repackaged Windows installer, installer that includes all the configuration, including the IP address of the command and control server. So that's very nice. There we go. And now if I do ls to see what I've got, I have something called repackaged velocirafter exe. And now I have to move that to my Windows machine, so I'm going to install OpenSSH server, which will make this machine into an SSH server so we can easily fetch it from the Windows side. And you always do an update on Linux before you install stuff to make sure you're getting the right versions of things. Alright, so now we have OpenSSH server on this device and we need to know its IP address. Hmm, that's funny. Uh, oh, my webcam just turned off because I pounded the table. That's all. All right. Fair enough. My connection is a little loose. All right. So here's the address. 192.168.0.158 of my Linux server. So I go to my Windows server and let me check my instructions. I think I just opened over. WinSCP. All right. WinSCP might already be installed here. Let's see. It is already installed. Great. And Caitlin put it on last night. So now I can just put in the IP address of my Linux server, which I already forgot, but it's 192.168.0.158. Okay. All right, and now I need the username and password, and those were over here in the Proxmox console, which somehow I don't see anymore, but I think it's student and student.1337. Let's try that. I don't think it's individual for each machine. I think it's always student.1337. Let's see if that connects. Good. This is a good sign. Say yes to agree to the fingerprint. And there we are. And so now we go into the VelociRafter directory. And here's that repackaged Windows client. So drag that onto the desktop. And I'll approve transferring it. Good. There it comes. Neat. And now uh, I don't care about 
confirmation. All right, so there's the file. Now we run it in a command prompt. We don't just want to run it, we want to run it with a, a switch. So uh, make an administrator command prompt. Yes, there we go, administrator. All right, and uh, I think I'm student. So I cd users student. Maybe I'm IE user. IE, I'm IE user. Okay, desktop. All right, and a dir should show my Velociraptor file here, and there it is. And so all you do is run that with service install. Service install. And that will start the local agent that connects you to the Velociraptor server, and you can see it in services on your Windows machine. Open services and it'll be down here under V Velociraptor. There is a Velociraptor service running. So now we should be able to see our Velociraptor client here in the server control page. And I think I can maximize this now. I'm not going to need anything else. Show all. Table is empty. Well, that's rude. Um, I'm afraid I, I'm going to have to make those configurations with the public IP address in the... Uh, yeah, I think I know what I did wrong. When I, when I tried to skip that step, I said I thought I could make it easier by skipping a step. I'm afraid that's not right. And if I, I can show you what's wrong. I just realized what I probably did wrong. There, if I go here, this is the Velociraptor server. If I go right to the start, it told me... There. List GUI is ready to handle requests on 127, but the front end is ready to handle client requests on localhost 8000. The localhost has to be replaced by your real public address or your Windows machine can't find it. So you will have to do the steps in that gray box, at least as far as localhost. So let me do that and I'll update the instructions right after I make it working on my machine here. My attempt to make it easier was in fact misguided. So here, if I, um, I'm going to do a sudo nano ets velociraptor dot config. Okay, and here the local host has to be replaced by my real IP address. And my IP address is this number here. Otherwise the client is not able to find me. So control W, control R, local host, shift control V, Okay, has to be replaced by the real address in two places. Okay. Now I need to regenerate the um, client. So I'm going to remove the repackaged file because it's uh, RM, because it's got the wrong address in it. And I have to re-perform the command that creates it. Um, going on here. Oh, that's, oh, here we are. All right. So that was this one to repackage it. All right. All right. So now I'm going to go to my Windows machine and replace the current one with this one. So I'm going to stop the service. All right, and now I'm going to delete this file. Um, delete. All right. Now I'm going to connect to my server uh, again with WinSCP. And it was 192. One, okay, let me go here. I've already forgotten it again. Uh, if I can figure out how to get there. All right. And now uh, here, there, 192.168.0.158. One ninety two one sixty eight zero one fifty eight student student dot thirteen thirty seven. Okay.
So here's the repackaged Windows executable. Okay. And what is this nonsense? All right, I don't know what that was trying to get my attention for. And now I run it with service install. Okay, and now it should be running. If I do view, refresh, action, action, refresh. Good, it's already running. All right, and now hopefully I will see it in my Linux box. So I'll refresh this. Unable to connect. Oh, I'm not running the server. Ah, that's no good. Let's restart the server. There. That's the front end. All right. The front end is ready to handle requests. And now the requests at front end requests can come into this address. Um, no, certainly not, James. This is just a demonstration so you see what's happening. Um, no, that's why the instructions are there. I don't expect you to follow along while I'm doing this. Um, all right. No, I demonstrate it and save the video, and then, then we can help people get through it as needed. And now I've got no client showing up yet, but I probably will. Uh, I may just have to wait a few seconds for it to connect. User admin. Well, I'm going to stop this video, and why don't you people start setting up your servers, and let's see how it goes.